Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's going, and now it's time in three, two, one. Now, this one's old and kind of ropey. My wife would not enjoy it. Do you wish you were impervious to pain, too? You realize you could burn your fingers off without even noticing, right? <laughs> The Morning Stream. Ah, that's the level of stupid we're looking for. Hello, everybody. Welcome to TMS. It is uh, Monday, March 25th, 2024. I'm Scott Johnson. That's Brian Ibbett. Hello. How Good are morning. You? Good morning. I'm all right. Good. Good morning. It's uh, Monday. It's wet outside. Cold. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. It's like 33. Warmer where you're at. Yeah, a little yeah, warmer. 18, 18 here, snow falling, but nothing like the blizzard, nothing like the big snow dump we had a couple weeks ago. So yeah. manageable, more manageable amount of snow on the on the uh, ground. Also, I keep having this thing where I, I am I'm almost hundred percent sure it's BS, but so somebody out there, you know what? Let's have Tolbert or some doctor chime in on this. Okay. Mm-hmm. I get the worst headaches before mm-hmm. a storm. Like they're almost migraine level, not quite. I yeah, don't, don't want to no. put, put them in that category, but I'll get like I a do, headache that's... and then bam, a storm comes and it goes away. It just dissipates as soon as it hits. Oh, really? Okay. So yeah. I get them beforehand. I usually just take aspirin as soon as I get them. So I don't know if, I don't know if they'd go away on their own as soon as the storm comes, but there's something about pressure. Like you get the, it's pressure, the, 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 um, the front of high pressure before a storm comes in that, uh, barometric uh, pressure is that what it is yeah exactly exactly your body is a barometer says uh chat i i mean look it your may body's be... a barometer <laughs> my favorite john mayer song i know it's less sexy than the other one that made it to yeah. the radio and now i want to do the whole song <laughs> yeah please do but yeah no it's not like sinus stuff it's like i don't know it's like this hideous like up here front thing and then as soon as it hits yeah. like the storm and it's not that much long it's not that much before the storm it's like maybe a couple hours before the storm hits. And then as soon as the skies open and the rain, the snow, the sleet, whatever it is that falls, I go, ah, like it and leaves. Then it just, and then it uh, breaks. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. It's very weird. So it's yeah. probably different for everybody. Everybody has their own thing. But uh, some people get that. Um, what is it? The uh, like a arthritis thing or they feel it in their knee or something. Mm. Yeah. Old injuries yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. The shoulder, this shoulder that I slammed into. Um, those kids when I was 14 on the on the tube, snow tubing, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that thing acts up a little bit when there's a storm. Actually, sure. it's the arm that's acting up in general. It's a piece of shit arm right now. But I think, I swear, I'm paying for a, a, an accident that happened when I was 14. The year was 1984, and I slid backwards <laughs> and smacked a kid who's probably in his 60s now. Right. Coming down the hill, and it still bugs me when, when storm wow. stuff kicks in. I know. It's lame. Weird how that stuff... Uh... Stays, it sticks with you. Stays yeah. with you forever. Well, yeah. how would it, how'd your date night go? That probably stuck with you. How'd it go? It stuck with me, Scott. We uh, it was my turn to choose for Tina. We had mystery date, and um, uh, about a month ago, I heard that Choir 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 was coming to Denver. Now, if you're not familiar with Choir Choir Choir, their exclamation point. So really, it's Choir Choir Choir. Oh, wow. Uh, they are a uh, comedy and music duo that. Um, from Toronto, usually they used to just perform in Toronto, I think, and now they, they, they go on the road all the time now, and they take a, an audience full of people, and lead them through singing, and and you go to this thing and you are going to sing. You're no one's going to hear you except maybe the people just immediately around you, because you're all singing at the same time and you're all singing together. Right. But um, uh, but you, the audience is the choir, so. Uh, they, you know, they, they lead you in song and for some of their songs, they actually break the audience up into parts and give each part different, different things to sing, either back patter or harmonization or things like that. And, uh, I give you a link. There was a special ABBA night. Tina's a big ABBA fan. So it was a special ABBA night. So it was all ABBA songs. Fortunately, they didn't do that, uh, weird song about the guy who, uh, finds a personal ad and hires a woman and her daughter to have sex but uh uh it was more of the hits more of the abba gold sure. than the uh, the abba dregs sure and um uh so you can find that uh, that mama mia clip that i sent you and just go you know a few 
seconds into it and uh, I don't play a little see. Bit of did you put action. it in the TMS group? Where'd you send it? I this? did. No, I put it in the. Uh, yeah, it's in the. Oh, TMS it's above chat. my. Right stu- above, it's above right our above other blaze, chat. blaze your glory. Yeah, and the old men in uh, Ghostbusters. Hold on, here yeah. we go. Okay, I found it. I'm gonna play a little of this. See if we can't get in trouble on YouTube. Here we go. Oh yeah. Well, if, maybe got it themselves, and they kind of guide you into that note when you're looking for the harmonization and stuff. It's, wow. All right. I've seen some yeah. choir. My mom is a choir director, and she struggled to get people to get their shit right. So I'm just impressed yeah. that a crowd of strangers can just get it. I mean, that's their whole vibe, I guess. That's the whole thing. That's the whole yeah. draw is they're able to get the audience to do this stuff. But that's awesome. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was an hour and a half. They We did, uh, um, you know, we spent maybe 20 minutes on Mamma Mia, like the setup and then the final, uh, the final everybody's singing along with it. But these guys are so hilarious the whole time. And so we're doing Dancing Queen and uh, uh, Fernando and uh, <laughs> um, SOS. Oh, that was another one where they broke the audience up into parts and gave each, each uh, group a different part. It was a lot of fun. And, is it, uh, and the only music backing is just guitar guy and, and it's uh, just the dude in the front with a guitar yeah wow wow that's amazing and uh um yeah and and it's and it's like they're really funny genuinely funny um uh genuinely funny uh people and so doing you know when they're setting up and saying okay you guys are gonna be doing the harmony on this one you're gonna be going up here and then he says just you and invariably somebody on the other side will start singing regardless mm. <laughs> so they'll you know they'll joke around with that guy and then they'll come back to the part of the audience audience that's doing harmonies and stuff like that it's it's it is uh it's a blast this is cool fun, yeah so. they're they got a website it's just choir choir choir.com and yeah uh, you can go check it out and see where they're coming the, on tour list their locations so if you uh it, it randy heard about this and immediately said i'm taking i'm taking sj to this I'm, t- I'm moving Catwoman to see the <laughs> That's right, exactly. That's great. Uh, so uh, uh, left that. We had a really good dinner. We oh, found this new place called Chopstickers, which is a um, – they do uh, Vietnamese, uh, like, soup and dan dan and um, uh, uh, bao, like, really good soft pork belly bao buns and soup dumplings. We, we – you know, basically picked everything that uh, that sounded so good, and then just had this big plate of stuff in front of us that we were that we were enjoying. That sounds fantastic. Really cool. Yeah, yeah. I would eat that. Awesome. Um, and then we uh, drove home, and uh, as we're driving, <laughs> uh, I'm st- we're stopped at a at a red light, and we're just chit chatting, and all of a sudden, a car flies through the red light between. Me and the guy in, in the car in the lane next to us. So two two lanes, two cars, and somebody in a white Dodge Charger flies through between us. Yep. And goes through the red light. Like, oh my God, how did he not hit somebody crossing the other way? It's, it was late. There wasn't a lot of traffic. So thank you for thank God for that. And then, um, you know, we're both like, God, you know, people uh, a holes like that driving around and doing that that shit. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. And then we come around the corner. <laughs> And we see, oh crap! He uh, he slammed into a guardrail. Like he he did not see that sharp turn uh, to get onto the highway. And um, look at that front end chat. Just wrecked his. Yeah, I, re- his, I re-showed uh, it in slow mo, zoomed up. Look at that. Oh, that is yeah. so munched. He got munched. He really got munched. So I, you know, we pulled over. I immediately called 911, said, hey, here's where we're at. There's an accident on the on-ramp to northbound I-25 at 20th Street, blah, 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 blah. And they're asking all these questions like, all right, um, uh, is, you know, are you, did you get hit? He's like, no, I don't know how we didn't get hit because he flew right by me, uh, you know, and, and uh, went through the red light. And I don't know how he didn't hit my car or touch my car. And um, got to be like an inch on each side. And this thing is so close. Exactly. It, it was so, so close. Yeah. And uh, and so and then I said, oh, by the way, I have a dash cam. I'm sure it recorded the whole thing. Want, uh, <laughs> want the footage? And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah. If you've got that. Awesome. Yeah, we'll text you a link and you can upload your uh, your dash cam footage. Um, meanwhile, while I'm talking to uh, 911, a couple people had parked on the other side of the on ramp. And we're getting out to check on the driver. So, you know, so I didn't have to try and get out of the car, risk getting my door ripped off or getting hit by other people who are getting onto the highway. Uh, thank goodness. Yeah, so. it's a tight little. Uh, so I just showed the video yeah. of the chat, but basically, for those at home listening, 
it looks like that turn has two very slight shoulders. But if yeah. there's a car on one shoulder all wrecked and it's sitting there, and then you guys yeah. are parked there, yeah, nobody there's... nobody on this side is going to know that. They're going to come. Right. They're they might come see around. the wreck, they're not see but they're not going to see you. Room. Yeah, they yeah, may exactly. they may see the aftermath, but they're not going to see Brian Ibbett and his door open. Right, and exactly. And even if they round the corner where they could see me, their eyes aren't going to be on me. They're going to be on the pile of charger that is uh, on the left side of their their uh, uh, their view. So um, we don't I like to heard... we don't like to stereotype here on the show. But char- why is it always Chargers? What's the deal? <laughs> You know what I mean? Chargers or is Mustang? It, is it always Chargers? I, I didn't feel, know that. I, I feel I, like I everybody feel like... who cuts me off in traffic, I feel like, is in something oh like a God. Charger, if not a Charger. Oh, here in Colorado, it is pickup trucks. Mm. It is the bigger the pickup truck, the tinier the little PP of the driver that's driving it, most likely. But uh, uh, yeah, it is. It is aggressive, horrendous, um, uh, like pickup truck drivers who. Who cut us off all the time? Mm, yeah. Well, I'm glad. I mean, the main thing, obviously, is that you didn't get hit, and that's good. We don't want that. Yeah. And hopefully, the you know, uh, Doctor, er, sorry, Dirtbox Fingers says it right. Hopefully, the driver was okay, and it's just an expensive, painful lesson. Exactly. That's, you know, that's that's what you hope for. Is that well? I hope you've learned something about the, this crap, and uh, mm-hmm. I hope other people who drive by also learn something if they're aggressive drivers themselves. Um, those people are saying post on Reddit. Where should I? Uh, you guys will have to let me know where to post this thing on Reddit. I don't there's know a, where. There's a whole group in there for uh, near-miss car stuff. Oh, um, really? <laughs> yeah. I follow it. I can't remember the name, though. Um, let's see if I can find it real quick, and I can tell you. Because it's a great place for this sort of thing, and this would fit right in. I actually even did an edited version of the video that shortens the light. Oh, good. Because your light's really oh, long. So mm-hmm. if you want to put that up there, you could do that. Um, but let's yeah. see. It's called... And hopefully you took off all the stuff. On, like, there's a lot of time on the end, too, that... Uh... Yeah, I cut I cut all that out cool. just to trim yeah. it. Um, let's see. Yeah, post uh, put that one in uh, in find. our our covers folder, our, our music folder, and I'll put that up there. What is the name of this? Dri- is it just drivers? Hold on. Oh, idiots and cars says. That's Benjamin it. Osters. That's yeah. it. Idiots and cars. Fantastic Idiot- thread <laughs> or uh, Reddit subreddit. <laughs> I feel like it's gonna trigger me with all the idiots and cars that I see regularly when I'm lifting. Yeah. Oh yeah. No. Yeah. Pretty much guarantee. Right. Now you're gonna notice it. Okay. I'm putting a copy in our thing, and you can do that. Uh, it's called ibitnearmiss.mp4. <laughs> nice. Excellent. Anyway. Um, yeah. I'm yeah. glad you're. Yeah. You know, I'm a. I'm glad you didn't get hit. B. It sounds yeah. like the driver probably okay. Although who knows what he was. Maybe he was drinking. My guess is who he knows? was just being an ass. If I had to guess. Yeah. That's that's probably typical, and I think if you know if he had an airbag in there, that thing was modern enough that it has to have an airbag. Then he was, I'm sure he was fine. But uh, yeah, <laughs> feels feels more likely that uh, if he was drinking, it might be more swervy and I don't know right. erratic, not putting mm-hmm. the foot pedal to the metal. I don't know how that stuff works. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, right. uh, so, well, I'm glad you're good. It's uh, crazy. Yeah, thanks. If you guys want to see, or here, I'll give you you all the link. Uh, if you want to see this again at your own leisure in the chat, you can. There's the cool. YouTube yeah. link. It's a, just a private nice. or an unlisted video. Oh, cool. Okay. Um, all right. Well, that's awesome. Uh, let's see where we are here. Yeah. Oh, uh, we got a, a, a thing about the uh, the live TV thing, you know, doing antennas versus, you know, services or whatever. You guys do Hulu TV, I think, or something like yeah, that. Yeah, we do. We do Hulu uh, live with uh, to get the um, the combo of uh, Disney Plus and uh, ESPN. Well, not, we don't care about ESPN, but we, <laughs> it's included as part of this package deal. I was going to say, it's there if you want it, I suppose. Um, well, this guy wrote in, didn't give a name, but he says if uh, you have the Paramount Plus app, you can watch live CBS shows. Uh, we have an antenna that sits in a window, and we get all the terrestrial signals clear and easy. Um, yeah, the, the Paramount Plus app thing, that's why we got the Super Bowl here. That was a live event. And um, it is true, I can go in there and see live shit all the time, but it's only it's only CBS stuff. So, yeah, as long as I was limited to CBS, I could see how that might be a go-to for me, but I don't spend really much time on CBS. There's nothing mm-hmm. on there for me, really. And there's more on Paramount, just proper streaming, than there is on the, the network channel. So mm-hmm. um, so I don't know. Have you used it for that before? Have you ever tried that? Yeah, there's... Um, it's funny, because that's where stuff... Let's see, what is it? Is it uh, maybe Survivor or Big Brother or something? I watched an episode using the actual... Um, using the actual Paramount Plus app. 
And it was live, like uh, a live episode. And it was live. It was being live. Yeah, it was aired live. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, we get that with Hulu, so so there's no re- there's there's not much of a reason for me to try it in uh, in Paramount. Hmm. Well, there you go. Thank you for that. 801-471-0462 if you'd that's like to send cool. in yeah, your own. If you don't have terrestrial, if you don't have a live service, that is a really good way to do it. Yeah. And this guy's got both. He's doing the antenna thing. and I don't know. I've been tempted. Yeah. I had to buy a tub, It doesn't though. sound like you, you know, I mean, you get your, you do, uh, how do you get your news? Like, uh, uh, I don't. I, I stay, I, you know, if I get it at all, I get it on the internet. I don't care about televised stuff at all, so I don't watch mm-hmm. it. I haven't seen, like, a regular newscast in probably... Oh, gosh. More than a decade. It's easily been that long. Almost as long yeah. as the show is. <laughs> so. yeah, no, we're, we're, uh, we're Lester Holt folks in this, in this household. We Lester Holt every night. That's good. He's your friend. Yes. He's there to help you. Yes, got, absolutely. He has no lips. Uh, moving on. Let's get to the... Uh, let's play half-asses, guys. Let's uh, get a game going here. I'm going to bring Dunaway in. And uh, he's going to be a big part of it. Uh, hold on a second. Let's see if we can do that and make that happen without any issues or pause. Yeah, feels like I just talked to. We just talked to him yesterday. I know, right? Um. Okay. Here we go. This is it. Hey, Dunaway. What are you doing, man? No, oh, hi, Scott and Brian. Hey, I don't know. what are you guys doing? Getting ready to bring you on and have a little half asses. Right, that's what we're oh, doing. Fine. Oh, that's great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, let's get into I'm ex- it. I'm excited. Let's get into it. What are we making? YouTube content? Yeah, we're making YouTube content. Smash the subscribe. Did you bring your subscribe yeah. button that we can smash as we go on here? Is that the plan? I did. It's, it's in. It's in my right pocket. Reach in there. Go ahead. Reach can, further. Further. I can tell no, Brian. I can't make that joke. I could tell Brian's. Brian's having a very intense uh, conversation with somebody. <laughs> I don't know who it is, but whoever you are, for the last don't five minutes. Me. Freaking, don't mind me, watching, sorry. <laughs> I've been watching that Quiet on the Set thing on uh, HBO Max. Uh, you know the Nickelodeon. Oh yeah, Boy. Fuffle. Yeah, wow. Yes, we uh, somebody one of the four of us will be recommending that this week, so we'll talk more about it. But yeah. I hear, I hear it's some heavy, heavy stuff. It yeah. starts off in one direction. Let's just say it veers. It's only like three episodes or something. So at first you're like, oh, this is a whole season of stuff. They're really gonna dig into it, and they did. But, you know, I think it's like three episodes or something like that. I enjoyed it. Really opened my eyes to some of the things that were going on. Do they, I already kind of suspected. Do they get yeah, into the know. Drake do they get into the Drake Bell stuff? The mm. um, His whole thing? Yeah, spoiler. They they do talk some oh, about really? that, yes. Yeah. yeah. So, it's yeah, not a spoiler, it is it? Is that a spoiler? Did they find out that Nickelodeon says there were actually uh, things you could do on television? Is that Was that a big expose? Um, they, no, no. It's called <laughs> things you shouldn't do on television now. You gotcha. Shouldn't. Okay. Yeah. Shouldn't. We That's did, okay. and you shouldn't. Well, all right then. I look. I want to see that, but I also am a little wary because I don't. I don't yeah. know if I'm in the mood. It's for... it's an emotional ride, especially as a parent. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Sure. Well, yeah. all right. You know what? I may see it just to. I don't know. We'll see. You know what? Let's see what that recommendal is Wednesday. Then I'll make my call. That's yeah, what yeah, I yeah, yeah, yeah. And luckily, because it's like, oh no, I love the Nickelodeon shows. I don't want to screw it up for myself. But it's really specifically uh, some shows, even though Nickelodeon is a company, is a big old dick company, just like all the companies. Say hey, what you're going to do. It's too big to be nice, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When you're too <laughs> too big to fail, but too big to yeah, be nice. Yeah, too big to be nice. Yeah. Jackasses. <laughs> Jerks. Especially stuff when it has like kind of meteoric uh, success and things kind right. of exploded for them in the 90s. And it just feels like the quicker you get successful, and the money comes rolling in, the more ethically dubious things can get. People get money. People get weird. Money, like, baby. This happens See, the dollar in, signs seem to block their their view of any sort of yeah. morals or. Uh, this is like, I get it. This is what happened I at Blizzard. This happened at Blizzard. It was basically just insane amount of growth over a very short amount of time, and they just lost control of each other. And then all that harassment and bullshit happened just right under everyone's nose. But it didn't matter because yeah, they were just raking in the cash, you know. Yeah, really you know, annoying. we talk about this from time to time. It's like, I'm always curious about individuals I see who go into a job and as one person then comes out on the other side is another person. And I go, oh, sometimes you got to ask, is it the person or is it the job? And sometimes you got to ask, hey, you should have been a person before the job. Yeah, 
is is just like that, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Money complicates everything. We don't even need any. But please subscribe to our patrons uh, <laughs> now so that we can. Please see if we can, if you can change us by subscribing to our Patreons and <laughs> giving us lots of money. There you go. Uh, all right. We're going to play a game and uh, you're here to compete. I think you lost last week, so uh, no pressure. But you is that, is that how you remember it? That's how I remember it. <laughs> I, that's my memory. I'm sticking with it because I'm pretty sure that's what happened, but I could be wrong. Uh, I can't wait. I can't wait for my uh, Max special where I talk about how Scott always was gaslighting me and stuff. It's mm-hmm. going to be uh, great. Uh, document all <laughs> this stuff. Uh, what are you gonna What are you gonna call it? What do you want to name your uh, your documentary? Um, sh- shut the hell up on the set. Red light. Red on air light. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. Nice. Love it. I can picture the cover now. Uh, I subscribe to your newsletter. All right. Well, let's do this thing. Brian, David, explain these rules and who might win what. That's right. Welcome to the morning. Half asses, a trivia game where I'm actually going to be giving you the answers. I'll give Scott and Brian a category and six possible answers, three of which are correct, and three of them, like, uh, I don't know what happened to the kids on Full House, are totally wrong and incorrect. I don't know if they're <laughs> mentioned in this thing. Depending on how Not confident they feel with the category, they can provide one, two, or three guesses. But if they get any of those guesses wrong, they get zero points for that round. Get one right gets you a point. Two right gets you three points. Three right gets you five points total. Player with the most points after three rounds wins the prize for their contestant wait a minute contestants oh yeah no, i've got some pulled from members of the tadpole that aren't able to be here live scott you're gonna be playing for Borin in canada nice not boring don't even know where in where in canada he is but he's he's in canada somewhere in that entire country and brian you're playing for colby in kansas city nice colby from kansas I like yeah. colby yeah. From kansas cool city. well he's from missouri, missouri but side. Yeah. yeah yeah kansas city's in missouri for those who are confused which sounds like Brian Dunaway <laughs> might be confused. Well, partially. Wow, you, part. man, I've, are, is, is, is your done? name is your name Dan Snyder? Jesus. No, it's a. <laughs> you mean to give you a back rub? On it, is, it is kind Gosh. of half and half, right? Isn't it sort it of split? Is. Yeah, there's parts of kids. I think most of it, like. 90% of it or, or a large portion of it is in uh, Missouri, but I think there's a little bit of Kansas City that's in Kansas. So who gets to claim the Chiefs? Does Is it 100% purely Missouri? Kansas City gets to claim the Chiefs. Right. But it, Are they but still it, the Chiefs? But which right. state gets to say it's our, it's oh, our thing? Missouri. Missouri okay. does. All right. Yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah. All right. Cool. <laughs> fun fun right, little side. By the way, writing. by the way, I just yeah. want to say this right now before anybody runs off and starts a blog. Scott is the nicest person I've ever worked with. He's been nothing but professional. <laughs> what did I say? Did I life. say something rude? What did I say? <laughs> no, no, no. You just, He's... you got people, you know, people get upset. I don't people understand. All I, I said shouldn't was. Be joking. I shouldn't be joking about that kind of stuff. I apologize. Yeah. I'm a jerk. We, anytime, it's uh, so true, Scott. Anytime I give you any flack on the show, I get emails and messages on Discord. You are so mean to Scott, Brian. <laughs> Why do you need to stop that? Why don't you go jump off a cliff and mm. I mean, all that, all that? Jeez. Rats you guys are. All right. Yeah, it's, uh, they're all signed. No, they're all signed by uh, uh, Frankenberger, weirdly enough. No. Uh, oh, weird. weird. Yeah. Might have a little pattern going there. Hmm. That's right. They all have the same name. Uh, signed, your mom. Uh, really? Okay. Anyway, let's uh, <laughs> let's get to our first uh, set of uh, answers here. Your category. Oh, this will be an easy one for you. Queens of Jesus. Egypt. Queens. Oh yeah. Of Egypt. Yeah. Okay. Oh, right off the tip of your tongue. I took, I mean, we all I have took a... this. In, I took this in college. So sure this should be easy. We all we yeah. all know the monotonic. The monomonic. The monomonic. The monomonic. We all don't know all to know the. She's Louise. The mnemonic for knowing all the queens of Egypt. Um, mm, your right. choices are, Erin A. Magda. Soba Kenefru. Sure. Uh, Hetchesput. Uh, Nefertari and Saidea. And thank you. I will not repeat those. <laughs> oh my gosh! I don't that first know one that. feels like bait, Ariana. Mm, she's a mm, grande. Mm. Grande. Uh, boy, I'm going conservative here because I don't know. Uh, we'll do two. That's all. I don't know. My history. My man. I love ancient freaking stuff like this but i don't know anyone's names yeah. i don't remember this i stuff. know you and me both uh all right let's get to uh, the answers by the way when i did this solo uh before i looked at the answers i got one right so don't feel bad oh, i didn't i didn't know this i didn't know like you you go in I and can, you try I these play, out i play every every card oh. before i put it in here i i, I try it myself or as i'm putting it in i type all the answers then i oh. make my guess and then i select then i uh do the code that says which answers are right now i feel a little bad about always uh 
you know, being mad, would you give me these hard ass questions? Okay. Oh yeah. No, I wouldn't, All I right. wouldn't put you through anything that I wouldn't right. put All myself right. through. As well, Brian. <laughs> it's the code. It's the brain code. Uh, you're, let's see, both of you settled on Magda. I'll just tell you right off the bat. Nope. Magda does not. Uh, no. <laughs> but your other choices each were correct. Uh, Hatch, nice. Hatch a split and uh, Nefertari. Uh, so Magda is from the Disney movie, isn't she? And we mixed her up. She's from she's a uh, Diablo movie. boss, as are oh, Arane and Saidea. Oh, I should have known that. that definitely sounds. They, <laughs> those, every one of those, those sounds other like three, a so diva the three that the aren't actual Egyptian queens are Diablo bosses. <laughs> who, who was the uh, who was the girl in Hercules? She sounded so familiar. Hercules, to this. Hercules, Hercules. Mag, uh, Magda, Mag, Magnaria, Mag, Magda. Magna Mag- Ragnia. Magna. Uh, shit. Carter. Carter. Magna I Carter. Yeah. I can't remember her name, so I will not worry about it, but I swear it was something like that. Anyway. Uh, oh, uh, Megara. Megara. Megara was her name. That's Megara. it. Megara. Okay. Oops. <sighs> All right. That's not her. No anyway. worries. All right. Well, that was a war- let's call that a warm up, shall we? Let's sure. go to uh, question two. And uh, if you've seen The Wizard of Oz, you might know this one. Uh, mm. Lyrics, words contained in the lyrics to Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Your choices are Witch, Lemon, Clouds, Storm, Lullaby, Shh. and Through. Mm. I'm going to give you five seconds before I... Uh... Shut up, <laughs> shut up. You can't talk halfway through my singing and give me five seconds. I definitely seconds. can bullshit. because if you, yeah, I don't want you to sing the whole thing. Uh, uh, two and two. I'm doing two. Yeah, I'm doing two as well. Fine. Two and two. You didn't give me a chance to sing all of it. That's bullshit. <laughs> did you also did you also not give yourself time to sing it when you did the card yeah that's what i thought uh, no, yeah i'm going to shut up yeah that's right uh, yeah you guys, you guys both locked in uh clouds is correct yeah you guys both locked in on clouds uh and lullaby brian you got lullaby yeah. Yeah. through however is not the other one is lemon like then and through, like lemon drops away lemon drops the chimney, yeah. top, chimney no. tops, got there. Shit. yeah uh, lemon, uh, lullaby, and clouds. Which put you ahead by three, you dirty bastard. You dirty, three, dirty three boy. Three nothing with Brian. We got one more here, so let's, uh, oops. And some, I'm getting called. I have the Wizard of Oz on the final. Police, it's one of those with the paint on the front of it where it's got Dorothy and it spins around and it's like, oh. oh it looks cool. like she's, pic- it looks like she's getting sc- Hold on. Yeah, did, you yeah, get a, just... did you get a call from the cops? You should answer. I that. did. I did. But they're they're trying to get me to fill out their survey. Oh. <laughs> I've gotten I've gotten two texts from them saying, "How did we do? Please fill out the survey." And I'm going to do it later. But but uh, don't busy. wait too long. You yeah. say my bl- my uh, my Oreo Blizzard was a little melty. Tell them that and just confuse them with like a <laughs> restaurant. <laughs> I love it. Okay, nice. Uh, all right. So, Brian, going into uh, round three with three points. Scott with zero. Let's get to the question number three. Uh, world record holders weighing over one ton. So which of these <laughs> world record holders weigh more than a ton? Your choices are the heaviest hockey stick, the heaviest bicycle, the heaviest tortoise, the heaviest squash, the heaviest Caesar salad, and the heaviest bar of soap. Which three of these things weigh more than a ton? Uh, I'm going with density here. Probably I'm okay. wrong, but I'm gonna try. You're it. You're my density. <laughs> I heard the same. I thought the same thing. <laughs> uh, it's the closest I'm gonna ever Could get. Watch to Teen winning. Wolf this week. I'm pretty excited. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're pretty stoked about that. You're gonna get your Michael J. Another, Fox on and yeah, all that. Yeah, Michael J. Fox on. Yeah, baby. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, what it's was it? in this one. The Teen Wolf sequel is not great, though, if I remember right, right? Oh like, no, it's it's fine, it's fine. It's it's it's, it's Teen Wolf. What do you want from it? Well, I wanted Michael, Michael J. Fox. Fox again. Yeah, exactly. Michael J. Fox didn't come back. <laughs> yeah, so, no, yeah, we get uh, just uh, Jason yeah, there Bateman. You go. Jason yeah. Bateman. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I wish we got Justine Bateman. Oh man, Ooh, <laughs> that would have been a really good Teen Wolf. I would. Yeah, no that. kidding. Right? Who says At- it has to be a guy? Jeez. Yeah. Oh. Adolescent crush. 101 with her man oh, yeah. loved her mm-hmm. anyway all right uh let's go down the list of these the heaviest bar of soap over 14 tons Jeez. oh wait so do you like rub yourself on it 
I mean, I guess you couldn't <laughs> pick it up, right? You have to, right? I think you just, yeah. you, you do it like a slip and slide. You take a yeah. run and then you slide on the bar of soap and roll yourself around. And right I, imagine it, to... I imagine this dial, too. What kind of soap do you imagine it being? It's uh, like that yellow leaving. dial shit. What oh, really? I was picturing um, like uh, ivory, like a just your okay. standard big white soap. Okay. Really what it probably is is like a Real thousand fly. other soaps all all yeah, got little, wet little and like, yeah. Everybody yeah, exactly, exactly and all, soap. all glued together <laughs> <laughs> i threw one of those out today a little sliver little bastard oh, yeah. i'm not gonna use you yeah. anymore you get that thin f off i'm going in right in the trash know, exactly <laughs> uh however all the other answers you chose Oh, we're no. Incorrect. The really? heaviest hockey stick is over 30 tons. What? I, 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 call, I call hockey yeah. on that. Uh, yeah. I don't think somebody actually used it to play. The heaviest Caesar salad, over three tons. The heaviest squash, weighing in at uh, 1,486 pounds. The heaviest bicycle, really just a little short, uh, 1,895 pounds. And the heaviest tortoise, not even not even hitting that 1,919 really? pounds for the heaviest oh, tortoise. Still which, pretty heavy. Brian wins. Yeah, is, uh, nicely done, dude. Holy crap. Congratulations. I, I got it. I got to say, a little upset about the heaviest Caesar salad. That is a lot of waste. Did people eat? Did everybody get a bite? I'm sure. I'm sure it was like one of those big food, like one of those things, uh, Caesar salad day, right? Like yeah, some yeah. company said, oh, we're going to. Uh, we're going to make the biggest Caesar salad, and then everybody in yeah, the yeah. stadium who helped assemble it gets to eat it. Because, God, that next day you put that thing in the refrigerator, you're going to yeah. smell it. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, hell yeah. I'm oh, looking. Yeah, I'm trying no, to find an, like an try, hour and that stuff. Trying to find the, the an image of it. The closest I can yeah. find is one that says world's biggest salad. It doesn't say if it's Caesar. But this looks like a, like a food waste nightmare. There's no way that they yeah. ate all this. Like, my gosh. Let's it's see. Gigantic. The here it is right here. The world's largest Caesar salad was prepared by Canarac, Canarac, the Tijuana restaurateur's chamber of commerce. Weighed, chamber of um, commerce. Three point two eight seven tons. Let's see. If That's got not a, a Caesar salad. What is that? Is that carrots in there? Get out of here. Yeah, and that's just regular old carrots. lettuce. It does sound, have anchovies too. No, no photos. It does huh. sound dense though, doesn't it? Like at that weight, yeah. it's got to be more dense. Yeah, yeah there's a lot of water. Oh, here's, right? here's the. I'll show you. Here's a photo right here. Uh, if I can find, let's see. Copy image. All right, I'll put it in our Discord. Okay, I'll pull it up. Oh wow! This is the one. <laughs> yeah. Look at this, guys. She ordered the big salad. Yeah, she no ordered kidding. the big salad. Holy shit! That still yeah. doesn't look like it weighs that much, but I guess I don't understand the. Oh, it's water! All is yeah. Plus, yeah, that and water is so heavy. This, let, yeah, it could get heavy. They right? get the croutons in there. You think it's hard to see in the. No, this croutons image. are light. Yeah. Yeah, but they probably now, did put them in there. Yeah. Yeah. I can't you know, how blown my mind was when I found out we uh, all the croutons I were eating were like just day old bread toasted. I'm like what? Yeah, yeah. those are the this best kind. Delicious. This delicious piece of uh, crouton. Mm-hmm. Right, it's fine. probably probably a way to say or um, to uh, what's the, what's the word? Well, not not throw things out. Back in the day, you were like, yeah. Well, we got this old bread. What do we do with it? Well, we give it to the birds, or <laughs> you can let it dry out, and put it in our salad. You know, unlike the heaviest Caesar salad, biggest food waste ever. Yeah, oh yeah, hell yeah. And then Caesar himself would be embarrassed by this. You know, he'd be like, "Oh, oh yeah, yeah, just yeah. stab me in the back already. I can't deal with this." He'd say, yeah, and this, "Then he would eat grapes." Is that yeah. the right guy? This, uh, yeah. The Caesar salad list, by the way, almost should be its own feud, uh, Tadpooly oh. feud topic. Here are all the things that go into Caesar salad um, among different recipes: uh, romaine, which is standard, croutons, yeah. lemon juice, Parmesan cheese, black pepper. Uh, warm or coddled egg. Use that to make coddled the dressing. egg. Yeah, not quite hard boiled, but like. Um, we uh, hold it. You're like it's okay, egg. <laughs> like soft boiled anchovy fillets and Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire sauce. What? What's a, what's this here sauce? And mm. then you start getting into like all right, hot mustard, olive oil, red wine vinegar, fresh garlic, watercress, iceberg lettuce, cayenne pepper, Tabasco, sugar, mayonnaise, and so of we're tomatoes, just calling cheese. anything. A anything salad. exactly. Mandarin mm. oranges, marinated artichoke hearts, avocado, ripe olives, bacon bits, sun dried tomatoes. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. I'm only halfway through the list, so I'll stop there. But you can, uh, you can do whatever you want with a is is romaine potentially some small grape tomatoes sliced up, uh -huh. uh, anchovy paste, and uh -huh. some Parmesan cheese. That's and some croutons. And some croutons and some croutons. Yeah. You don't have to add tomatoes. Tomatoes are totally optional. But I've seen it. Yeah. And onions. Yeah. Oh my god. 
Onions. Oh, so the reason that they did this thing in Tijuana, uh, thank you, Wen, the Caesar salad, not named for um, Julius Caesar, but named for the uh, the creator of the salad who was from Mexico. Oh, I had no so idea. That's why this, that's why this so thing pissed. was, uh, the record thing was in uh, Tijuana. I had no idea. I thought that was an Italian thing. I why do why are Italian? Okay, well, now I'm starting to think that... Uh, um, well, <laughs> what do you call it? What's their names? When you hear your family, I can't think of their freaking name. What's their name? When you hear your family, oh, oh, Olive Garden. Olive Garden. Thinking, when um, you hear your, when you hear your family you, do what? When no, you hear in your family do? When you're here, your family. But they, <laughs> when you hear your family, Hello? they, uh, your family. <laughs> they, those guys might be lying to us because they have Caesar salad and they act like they invented it over there. Those bastards. I didn't know. I had no idea <laughs> it was Mexico. That's crazy. I thought they invented breadsticks. Was that not? I don't okay. know. Ital Italy? Italy? I don't know what they did over there. I'm looking no, at. I thought you, I thought about Olive Garden. Oh well, our Olive Garden. It, listen, it's a. It's not that great. Don't go there. Which is better? Which is better? <laughs> cheese sticks from Olive Garden or Fazoli's? Oh. What do you think? Uh, oh, what's your vote? man. What's your, what's your vote? Ooh, I uh, think I'd go with the uh, Olive Garden. We don't have right. we don't have the last Fazoli's in town turned into an El Pollo Loco at the end of last year. So we're we're done here so with by Fazoli's. default. Right, by default. By default. <laughs> if I want to get either of the two, I'm only getting uh, uh only getting uh Right, Olive right. Garden right now. Turns out I have had a coddled egg. I recognize this from the cruise. They had a lot of these. Oh. oh really? Yeah. Oh, so like you a dip little your dish. bread in the yolk. Yeah, yeah. It's right where you just cut the top off and. Uh, it's like that right there, and they come in looks these like little. Like you forgot yeah. to cook your egg is what it looks like oh, to me. Oh right, right, right. Where they put in a ramekin as opposed to the shell is a soft boiled egg. Yeah. The the uh, ramekin is a coddled egg. Okay. And all the descriptions just say, you "Just got to be really careful while you cook it." I mean, that's the whole thing. <laughs> you have to coddle it. Yeah. Yeah, you got to coddle your <laughs> eggs. So be careful with your eggs. Uh, preserve right. them. And uh, Dunaway, you win. Okay, that's just how it's hey. going to be. Uh, yeah, I, don't worry. Next week, Scott will say he did. Yeah, I'll just say I won last <laughs> next week. Didn't I? Did I not win the last one, or am I making that? You up? did. You really did. You remember. did. I don't. You, I think. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you did. <laughs> so, all right. So that'll be good. Uh, Brian, remind these fine winners what they won, because both of them won shit. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. right. I didn't even get to that, did I? Uh, all right, our winner, uh, Colby in Kansas City. You're getting Yay. a copy of Children of Silent Town and Snowtopia Ski oh. Resort Builder. Ooh, build your own, that's fun. build your that's own fun. snowbird and have your own uh, nertacular there if you want. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, Boren in Canada, you're going to be getting Neo Two. I don't know if that's Nio N I O H Two. I've never know how to say that. I've never know that one. It's very, very highly thought of sort of uh, Souls-like competitor uh, action oh, RPG thing. People yeah. people like them. I've never played them, but I hear good things. I've just never known how to say that. I, you're probably <laughs> right. Nio, probably. I you know I pronounced it five ways. One of those ways. Nio. <laughs> yeah. I think I like your Dunaways is the best. Nice job. Yeah, for sure. For Congratulations sure. to these two chuckleheads. You won no matter yeah. what we did. And uh, next week, we'll, we'll challenge it again. And then, of course, Wednesday, right. we'll give the few to try. And uh, you know that's a whole separate bag of cheese. So uh, mm -hmm. come on back for that and try to win again. Dunaway, is there anything you'd like to tell us before yeah. you go? Are are we gonna play some Unreal Tournament 2K4 tonight, Scott? Uh oh, 2K4. I don't know. Are we? I thought it was 99 on Mondays. No. Oh, you're right. It is 99. Are we okay. gonna play some 99 tonight, or I, you got the Monday show? I've got the Monday show, but I could probably play before carter and i record okay. so i don't want you to stress yourself no no but no yes i like to <laughs> play to you play. know i like to play plus i gotta get some i gotta get my position back i don't like yeah, you've slipped I, you've slipped i have to spots. try it uh, with my new monitor finally got my monitor set up <gasps> so i won't injure myself with my uh, wrist or my neck and since i'm not uh since i'm not lifting today i think i might be in that'd be great Very good yep no 4, 4 30 is uh before i think so isn't that what yes. we did last time 4 30 yes. 6 30 yes. your time 4 30 okay. correct awesome uh, be there, Dunaway, and also kiss our butts. No, you. Crap. <laughs> he got in before I could stop him. All right. Uh, quick. Sneaky like that. He That's is sneaky like that. Unreal player. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Let's do a quick news story and play this for its intro. Why don't I have it handy? Oh, I do. Some quick news brought to you by. The timeless story of a drug-addicted girl who takes advantage of a mentally challenged boy for three decades straight. Can you name the movie that that is? Uh, Dune. Nope. 
Because <laughs> I think I think everything right now for you is Dune. Okay, it's not Dune. Damn it's definitely it. not uh, Dune. Think about a movie. I'll give you a hint. It was in the nineties. Drug girl takes advantage of a mentally challenged boy for three decades straight. Yep. Um, <laughs> it's one of well, these. Sid and Nancy was a lot briefer. Uh, <laughs> a lot more brief. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay, Forrest Gump. Yep. Forrest yeah. Gump. All right. Good point. Yeah. Yep, Forrest takes Gump. Takes advantage of him. <laughs> yep. Uh, it's alter alternate descriptions, folks. Alternate. Yes. Okay. Oh, you you right. may have your own, but that one's mine. Um. All right. Let's talk about this. California man was arrested for allegedly taking a leg of a person killed by a train. So somebody got killed by a train, and this dude went and took one of the legs like a weirdo. Wow. Yeah. Seems wow. seems like a strange thing to want to take. If I, I want was, a souvenir. Yeah. I I witnessed this. Can I take a leg? It'd be like Brian taking that guy's tire after he rushed. Exactly right. Hop over there. Again, if I wouldn't have potentially caused injury to myself to go over to his car and cross the uh, the on-ramp, then yeah, I could have taken something. A little yeah. souvenir. That was a little danger pocket, that whole it video. Was a little da- it was, yeah, that certainly did not want to get, uh, um, plus the guy on, on 911 saying, um, yeah, if you're not able to get out of your car without risking injury, uh, are there people over there? I'm like, yeah, there are three people already over there checking on him. And one of them was on their phone calling, probably oh. also calling 911. Yep. I think her name was Angelica, as a matter of fact, because it was a whole police thing when they called me and thought I was Angelica. They had a whole list of people who called from that uh, that deal. I love that you answered with your voice, and then they said, is this Angelica? Like, what's going on with that? That seems crazy. How did they not know... <laughs> How no, do they, they not know? Angelica. Oh, they, yeah. they didn't okay. ask if it was India. Yeah, they said, uh, "Can we speak to Angelica?" Please? Oh, said, There's okay. no Angelica here. Oh, well, this is Denver Police Department. I said, "Oh, yeah, I, I think you're probably calling on the same thing that that uh, that uh, both I and Angelica called about." Well, I'm glad, and also it was night. There's a lot of reasons you don't want to get out of your car. Exactly. I'm glad you didn't do it. Anyway, this guy was arrested after allegedly taking a leg from the scene of a deadly train collision in Wasco. Uh, where is this? California. Uh, officials reported that the 27-year-old Rosendo Tellez removed evidence from the site after a person was struck and killed by a train, uh, which severed their leg around 8 a.m. at the city's Amtrak station. Disturbing video circulated on social media of a man appearing to hold a severed body part, in this case a leg, and eat from it. God. Oh, God. That, why wasn't that in the headline? They buried the headline. <laughs> This is oh the most b- most buried it? most buried headline we've ever read on the show, for real. Yeah, yeah. you take the top spot. Congratulations! Oh, it's literally Holy HuffPo. <laughs> it's a HuffPo <laughs> I was, article. I was pulling up uh, our Indy in the middle, the notes on our Indy in the middle, and you said that I'm like, wait a minute, I didn't see that in the headline. Yeah, it's very weird. The man in the video oh, appears yeah. to raise the body part in the air as law enforcement arrives. The Kern County Sheriff's Office reportedly took Telez into custody without the incident on multiple outstanding warrants for allegedly taking evidence from the scene. The deadly train collision is under investigation by the BNSF Railway. So, yeah, I'm going to just say this. If you witness any kind of accident and somebody is dismembered, whether they perish or not, (laughs) don't be taken an arm or a leg or anything else or eat it. This ain't the country buffet. Uh, Yeah. uh, yeah, What are you doing? What drugs are you on? It has to be drugs, right? Why would you do that? I would think so. I mean, I can't imagine a walking up and saying, "Oh, uh, you think anybody would mind if I just took this?" But then the uh, then the eating of it. Uh. Yeah, it's like these people melt plastic and snort it or something. Like, why? Why Have are you, you uh, so? You haven't strong watched out? the video, have you? Because I don't think I could. <laughs> oh no, I can't do it. No. Yeah. I, there's yeah. there's certain things where. I'll watch a fail video. I'll watch a car sure. accident if I know somebody's okay after. Like, I don't mind all that. I can't do, like... I've still never seen Two Girls, One Cup. To this day, never seen it because... I haven't either. I only know I about saw a it. reaction video, and that was like, okay, that looks like something I never need to see. Yeah, all, all I knew from it was that I, yeah, that I, I didn't want to see happens. it. Yeah, I, I, I know I, the plot. <laughs> I, I don't even know the plot. I know enough to know that it was grossing people out so bad and now you say there's a couple of girls in a cup involved? You can put two and two together on this thing. I don't want anything. Cl- I don't want to go anywhere near whatever the hell that is. Uh, so don't tell me, anyone. Chat. Um, you all fooled me with that damn goatsy. Yeah. You're don't not going to fool me again. You're not going to get me again or freaking tub girl or whatever that was back in the oh, day. Tub girl. <laughs> I heard that was fake. Wasn't that fake or no? Was it, was it real tub oh, girl? I have no idea. 
Oh. All I know is I was horrified by it. Yeah. Yeah. So never again. I will that, was, never... that was when you stopped using your hot tub, I think. It was basically <laughs> right then that you when Randy in showed your up old in house. That... Yeah, it was when Randy Randy got in. <laughs> it was when Randy that's right. It was Tubman. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what happened. Uh anyway, that guy's in trouble. Don't don't be eating legs. Um, here's the thing. Uh, California police department has been using Lego heads to mask identities of suspects. They've been just like plopping them on these photos and stuff. Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. They thought they were real funny about it. Cause you do have to protect them, but it's rather sure. than a blur. Here's a Lego minifig head. I can kind of see why you might goof around like that, whatever, but sure. Lego yeah. is pissed and they have instructed the California police department to stop using <laughs> Lego heads as masks. Uh, the Murrieta Police Department of California has been instructed by Lego to stop doing it. They've been digitally adding these heads onto photos of suspects. Uh, the Police Department Lieutenant Jeremy Durant told Fox News Digital in a statement that the Lego group requested that they stop using Lego heads in their social media posts. Uh, they reached out to us and respectfully asked us to refrain from using their intellectual property and social media content, which, of course, we understand and will comply with, says Durant. We are currently sure. exploring other met methods to continue publishing our content in a way that is engaging and interesting to our followers. That's not weird. Block says, sure, go ahead. Go here's ahead, it. yeah. Here's a, here's a stack of them. Use they all the ones you want. They don't care, do they? Just no. put a, you know what? Just put a block on their face. Just tell you, you don't need a face. Just put a, like a six peg mega block. <laughs> use, use heads from that uh, painting of the dogs playing poker. Oh, I'd be into that. That'd yeah, be great. If I got arrested, like, yeah. if you got arrested right now, what would you prefer they use to to mask your identity? What uh, right? What? Um, let's see. I mean, I feel like the. I'm not going to go with the obvious, like, wow, well, a picture of George Clooney or something like that. Mm. Um, mm. Uh, I say, uh, uh, I don't know. I have to, I'm trying to grab my trying to grab my. Uh, I have it over here somewhere. Oh, this joke is going poorly. Well, it's all right. Uh, we... Have to cover it with this. Oh, shit, of course. Duh, we'd all use the Ibbit bomb. We'd all just use the Ibbit bomb. And what's great is they'd be like, oh, there's no way that he could look like that under yeah. there. So that can't possibly be him. Yeah, I don't think, I don't know what I'd want. I think I'd want like, um, you know, like a big eyeball, just an eyeball. Oh, yeah, like the residents, basically. Yeah. Like that old, uh, the just old a, band, the residents. Just a big eye right in the center there. That'd yeah. be cool. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, it's your uh, Spider-Man mask. Could use this. That'd be great. Yeah, it'd be all right. Although then you'd have if Marvel after you, and they're litigious as hell. That's those bastards. Yeah, they probably would not approve. Yeah. No. Um, all right, that'll do it for today's news. A uh, couple stories to keep you warm, and uh, we'll have more tomorrow. But right now, we're going to do some science or a break, and then we're going to come back with some science with Bobby. And uh, he's yeah. here once again, three weeks in a row, because Steven's had stuff. He's had, you know, <laughs> things. It's quite a run. Quite a run Bobby's having. Yeah, yeah it's amazing. But uh, Steven did assure me he'll be back next week. He's just been busy with school stuff where he works. Uh, so all that coming up after this song. Brian, what did you bring? Yeah, so Turn Up the Volume, the uh, the, the uh, blog Turn Up the Volume says, uh, when they heard this band, think Deftones having a noise wrestling fight with Mastodon with Evanescence's charismatic Hellcat as ref. Wow. Uh, that's their description. Uh, actual results may vary. This band called Atomic Life. There's a brand new single called Incense and Aries. Uh, their self-titled EP is coming soon. There's former members of the Dillinger Escape Plan, HO9909, Thought Crimes, Glassjaw, and NK as members of, uh, of the uh, Atomic Life. Here they are right now. Here's the song Incense and Aries. Who are you? Um, a lot of stupid shit, yeah. Big talk for someone who can't even use astral arts. We're back. Who is that again? That is Atomic Life and the song Incense and Aries, which is mistyped in the... Uh, <laughs> The version they sent me, the actual MP3 is spelled uh, A I R E S, like airs, incense and airs. Oh, but it's uh, supposed to be Aries, A R I E S, like the the astrological sign. Mm -hmm. The upcoming Tron sequel is called Aries. Oh, is that all? That's all. That's uh, A R E S, though, like the God of War. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. So uh, pronounced the same, though, right? Pronounced the same, Aries. Yeah. yeah. I'm looking forward to that, except I don't know. I'm a little hit and miss with that. Uh, that Jared Leto fellow. Jared Leto, yeah. Yeah. I don't know how to feel about that. Well, I mean, he needs uh, something to wash the stink of Morbius off, so. I guess so. 
he he sometimes impresses the hell out of me in movies yeah. and things, and then sometimes he's like really annoying to me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I don't know how to feel <laughs> about it. Um, let's see here. Wh- uh, who are we adding to this call? Oh, yeah. I think we're adding Bobby. <laughs> we are. I almost added Steven, even though he's not here. <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, Bobby's Bobby not in. a huge freaking nerd. That's right. He's not a huge freaking nerd. He is, however, a purveyor of scientific knowledge, and that's why we have him here. Let's do it. Science! Bob is hungry, and the soup looks good. Well, let's prove it. Bob, are you hungry, and does the soup look good? I am hungry. I don't have any soup handy. Yeah. Mm. But I'm sure, I'm sure it looks good. It probably looks good. Mm-hmm. You're not going to mm-hmm. deny everyone some good-looking soup. You know? Yeah, I'm sure it looks fine. Sure. To each their own. Yeah, that's sure. what I always say. It's good to have that, you here. Egg picture that uh, Scott put in the thing almost looks like egg soup. Like yeah, a little bit. your bread into that egg soup. A little bit, right? Looks like, uh, yeah. I mean, it is so coddled that I'm not even sure it's cooked. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. I feel like yeah, I there's some stuff on the edge the that does not look, uh, yeah, it does well, not look uh, opaque. Best I can tell from the three ways that I found that you can prepare these, and they, they give you three specific cooking methods. Uh, it's all really just about... Is it done? It's barely done. Okay, is there just a little film of yeah. like tying it so together? So you really are coddling it. You're just yeah, yeah, yeah. You well, have to. Okay. You can't let it. You can't put it in there and walk away. You have to coddle that damn thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. coddle your eggs, everybody, or else these oh, eggs, helicopter, these helicopter snowflake cooking. eggs. <laughs> yeah, right. these eggs are easily triggered eggs. Is that what you're saying? Anyway, uh, well, it's good to have you here, man. Uh, three weeks in a row. I who knows what will come out of your mouth today? Except you have to answer this phone call first. All right, we're gonna play it. Uh, okay. This is about you and your flying stuff. So uh, I'll play it, and then we'll talk about it. Here you go. Good morning, stream. <laughs> Hi, salad and bread. In the ongoing soap opera of the show, we heard Bobby was learning to fly, and that at some point he got to do a solo flight, but we never heard the end. Is he a pilot now? Please inform me. Take these Bobby wings. <laughs> And learn to fly again. Fly around the cheese. <laughs> all right. First of all, it's fine if you guys call in stoned and or drunk. It's totally fine. We don't yes. care. We'll take your calls either way. Secondly, Bobby, um, it does feel like oh, we no. heard about yeah, your... both Mr. and Mr. on the phone. Darn That's it. That's right. Uh... <laughs> yeah, two Mr.'s is too many. Um, we did hear about your big solo flight test and stuff, but I guess it's true. We haven't really heard a ton about, like, now what? Are you flying all the yeah, time? Yeah. Are you flying other people? Are you getting calls from United? Like, what do you do now? <laughs> well, I'm I'm not. I don't have any goals of being a commercial pilot. Um, uh, definitely not an airline pilot. That's not going to happen. But it's possible if if I were able to become a person, uh, perf- uh, a commercial licensed pilot, I might pursue that. But there are issues with vision that might not be quite good enough mm-hmm. for the FAA. That that um that that might get in the way of that but it was never a goal i always just wanted to learn how to fly and so i did i'm a pilot now drunk listener i can't remember the name it was, <laughs> i can't remember very either. slowly i'm glad he yeah. said uh, salad and bread pretty good because we were just talking about salad it's and pretty, bread. pretty good am timing I, yeah, yeah. Exactly. am i bread in this in this instance you're always bread you could, you could you could be bread uh, i'll, I'll uh, if you meant me then i'll happily give well, you well there bread. are two slices yeah, there are. Well, two, you're right. Sandwich. Usually, usually, and it's actually unlimited if you go to the right place. Like if you go to Olive Garden, that bread keeps on coming. <laughs> hey, do you have and bread? Do you guys have Winco's where you live? The the chain Winco. Does that sound familiar uh-huh. at all? Okay, no. no we went no. to a place yesterday called Winco, which I was it was recommended to us as having really good prices on like produce and and stuff, kind of like anti inflationary kind of stuff. But they also make you bag all your own stuff. Like they get, they, they mm-hmm. cut out a bunch of the fluff of what you would usually expect mm-hmm. at a grocery store. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there aren't like fake coupons and all that. But they had the best deals on the most amazing freaking bread. And I'm really? like, I'm, I'm not even supposed to eat this much bread. But I walked out of there with some whole grain, like <laughs> sliced up awesome bread. So anyway, anyone out there have a Winco? Go there. It's great. It's freaking good. Anyway. <laughs> But yeah, I'm I'm flying. I try to fly once every week or two, actually, oh. um, and just to keep skills up. I just just uh, a couple weeks ago started my instrument training, and so the short version of that I tell everybody uh, that instrument training is is that it just it's a it's an extra 
It's an extra part of your certificate that you get that allows you to fly in the clouds, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, this, is a, so. this might be a dumb question, but like, okay, once you graduate and you're not using the instructor plane, I assume that when you're learning, you're using the instructor's plane, or it depends on where you go. You okay. you have you some places you'll have an instructor and you'll provide your own plane, or you'll rent mm-hmm. a plane separately and then hire okay. an instructor to come with you. But a lot of places, a lot of instructors operate out of small privately owned flight schools and and flight okay. schools are often like you know said with air quotes because not not as a not not to say that pejoratively like that's there's no problem but when, when we say flight schools some of these places really just are uh airports that own um mm, several planes. several planes and gotcha. then they also employ flight instructors mm. to, so that they okay. can get you know those planes can be constantly going up and, f- and flight instructors have a place to to also get um their flight time and have a job as well so mm. okay and so then once you graduate you still just still able to rent those planes so when you yep. go uh once a week or once every couple of weeks you rent the plane you fly it and yep um yeah cool. that's what and that's what i do actually there's um it wasn't the school that i went to but there's a there's an airport near here that has a flight school that they've got a fleet of like four cessna 172s and that's the one that's the type of plane that i learned in so i just go there and they've got like a they've got like a program online you booking program you go in there and okay. and book yourself a plane and then go and i just take one of their planes up and fly do they make you fuel cool. it up before you bring it back kind of thing yeah it. it's fun because this this airport <laughs> that i fly out of doesn't do where i trained does full service fuel you would call them up and be like hey i need yeah. the plane topped off and they would do it for you this place that i rent at now has is all self-service fuel mm. so which is kind really? of fun. so you have to do yeah. you just you uh drive it over, over to another part of the airport fill it up when you after yeah. you land kind of thing at at the airport there's like a gas pump for planes <laughs> and you're That's like awesome you pull up to it and you have to get out like a ladder and you have to ground the plane electric electric statically you know wow and, and oh you, yeah sure that makes sense and you cl- climb up the thing with a big big like gas pump over your shoulder and put it into the wings do you try to wow. hit an even number and do the whole like thread it and tick, 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 tick. <laughs> try to get yeah. it to an even 20 or 30 bucks or i don't know how much uh yeah, yeah whatever much, fuel uh, costs then you spill the cost, fuel yeah. all over the all over the plane oh geez what does a what is a gallon of um uh it's not jet fuel airline fuel it's, it's not they, they call it yeah. aviation fuel yeah aviation fuel but what's um, the is it different than gas by a significant amount yeah. is it absolutely okay. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. higher yeah, you, you should not put, uh, or something it, or it's just got I don't know the specifics, but it's I got know nutrients it's, and minerals that are good for what a growing airplane yeah, needs. It's got a mm-hmm. high fiber diet for your plane. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, a gallon of aviation fuel depends on the airport you go to. But uh, yeah. but I've seen them between six and a half would be really cheap, all the way up to I've seen like ten dollars wow. a gallon. Okay, yeah. where I am right now, it's a it's a round seven ish dollars, okay. seven to eight dollars a gallon. Jeez, that's not that bad. It's not though. cheap, and planes hold a lot of fuel. <laughs> I kind of thought so, that'd be higher, so I guess I guess yeah. it's still high, but it's I don't know. I I just yeah. thought, well, it's airplane yeah. fuel, so therefore you're going to pay a way more than you would for for a car, but really you're just paying about double, almost triple, I guess. It's good to yeah, know well, that aviation fuel is cheaper than aviation gin, so that's there's that. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not really cheaper though, because um Scott, because a plane like the planes that I fly they burn between eight and 10 gallons an hour. So, Oh, wow. So it, oh, wow. The, it might not be as expensive as you thought per gallon, but you're using much more, many more gallons per hour than in, in a car. So those so. tanks are big then. Cause you got to do like, yeah, I have, I have a plane with a relatively small tank and it's 38 gallon tank. Oh, wow. Um, and, uh, it holds 38 gallons, but you know, the one that I trained in had like 50, around 50, five or so gallons do you know anything about this is such a side question but like the rise of evs in in cars do you think there's a chance that eventually smaller you know two people four people planes could adopt a technology that would mean no more fuel i think eventually i think eventually it will but right now it's it's very difficult uh batteries are heavy weight yeah yeah batteries are very heavy um i think it'll probably you'll see them in um, larger, large-ish uh, 
planes that are carrying cargo first. Yeah. You probably yeah. will you might see them in small general aviation planes. They might exist and I'm not aware of it, but it's all very experimental if it does exist. Um but but batteries are getting lighter and battery technology is getting lighter and lighter all the time. So that's something that that the aviation industry is 100% actively it's act it's an active area of research interesting yeah i could see that being a big boon because i don't know that technology could lead to other launch methods for totally. rockets eventually i mean that seems crazy because well, the boost you need is so insane maybe not rockets that's difficult right because the reason rockets get are able to get things off the ground is because they act they have propellant the whole point right. of propellant is that it's propelling something out of the back of it right to to mm -hmm. cause the rocket to go up and you need a lot of that. So I don't know that batteries will ever get rockets off the ground, but, um, you take some batteries to start it and then, a, and the world's <laughs> largest Caesar salad is your propellant. That's and right. Then yeah. We solve big, two problems, you know, yeah. A big yeah. container of lentils to give you the gas boost that you need That's to, right. uh, to get it out there. <laughs> Throw some refried in there. I'm, we're on our way <laughs> to Mars, right. everybody. Well, anyway, that's awesome. Uh, I, though this is not our subject today. Our subject today is currently unknown to Brian and I, so why don't you share it with us? Well, so there's actually a lot of science news this week. There's stuff about, like, uh, like dogs. Humans have finally caught up with dogs and getting t a tick medication, perhaps. <laughs> um, uh, there's also, there was a major flu strain that went extinct. The Apparently, the Voyager probe is under attack from the universe that is trying to make it crash. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> um, but uh, but um, I'm talking about none of those because I saw this headline and I knew I had to do it for TMS, which was the headline was dogs brain activity shows they recognize the names of objects. And if I see dogs' <laughs> brains, yeah, it's all it's a it's a it's a lock. Do we do you have yeah. the audio clip handy, Scott? Does uh, it set up? I don't know if I do. Hold on, let's see. Brains. Did I put it in here? Do dogs have brains? Because I like <laughs> seriously wanted to know. Oh my gosh! Perfect. Exactly. Nice. Perfect. Exactly. All right. So there was a new study that just uh, came out that suggests that dogs actually can recognize the names of objects. Um, and the data that they have is uh, is brain activity evidence, like they put EEGs or ECGs on the, or it's EEGs. They put it on the 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 heads of dogs, and and were able to determine whether or not their brain activity changed whenever they match or didn't match the names of an object and a and an and the object itself. Now you might be wondering, didn't did didn't we already know that dogs can yeah, like if you say object. ball, get ball, yeah. like we had dogs that would know, but both of our dogs would know, oh, that's the ball. I'm bringing back right. the ball and not yeah. the teddy bear or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I thought the same thing. Um, but apparently, uh, according to this article that I read, uh, there's been a lot of research been that's been done over the past few decades, since 1981, I believe, um, that showed that dogs actually, despite what we think, generally dogs do not recognize recognize the names of objects. Um, there's, uh, the, when, when we think about understanding, like recognizing the name of an object, we, it's called referential understanding in psychology and, and, um, it's the connection between a word and then the mental representation of that word. Mm. So what we think of dogs doing when we say, go get the ball or the bone or something like that, it could be that the dog is doing something else. They're not actually hearing the word of the object and then creating a mental image of it and then retrieving it. It just may be an action that like, because one thing that's known about dogs is that they are very good at understanding, maybe not objects, but they do understand commands very well. Yeah, that's um, true. So, so when so I said to my dogs this morning, are you guys hungry? And they all went, Murr! their eyes, you know, they, their ears went up and they all freaked out because they know when I say hungry, it's, yeah. it's food that, that, we know that that's them hearing a word or to them a sound right. combo that means right. a certain result, right? So it makes sense to yes. me that they would have the same thing with, uh, like Brian said, with a ball or with a, mm -hmm. yeah, anything else. Yeah, it does Fair seem to toy. make intuitive yeah. sense because you're right. It's it's incontrovertible that dogs, and, and through research as well, that dogs do understand language in some way. Um, and uh, especially commands, you can teach a dog commands. And like you said, you can, if you say, you guys hungry? Or are you ready ready for some dinner or food or something like that? The, there seems to be a response that you will get out of a dog. And, and so, it, but it, 
the past research has shown that it's not this referential understanding. It's not that they understand that that word is an object and it connects them with a mental image of an object. It just, they've probably what, or at least this is what was thought, because obviously this research is, has changed our understanding of that, but it was thought that dogs just had, they would hear something and then it would, they would learn over time to connect that with an event or, or, or a feeling, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so it would change their behavior, right. um, but it wouldn't necessarily change the in- internal state of their mind. Um, so, so yeah, but there are studies that have been done and replicated. They can still have problems, even if they've been, been replicated. It can be really hard to isolate certain things. So problems with old studies might have been that dogs are in the laboratory. Dogs can be very easily distracted, right? There's a lot of distractions in laboratory settings, so maybe they're there's something else going on whenever they tried to see if they understood. Because what they would used to do to determine what they thought was that dogs didn't know what these object words were, the way they used to test for that is they would just put a bunch of objects in front of dogs, and then they would ask them to fetch one of them. And it was always just a random result. Dogs would just randomly pick something. Right, whatever's right. closest or bright, mo- most uh, brightly colored or whatever. Something, right, yeah, right. Yeah. Also, whenever these tests were done, it was always done with the dog's trainer or owner present. And so that can kind of mm. confuse things as well. Um, but uh, because we know that dogs do like humans a lot, there's that's, there's evolutionary pressure that has caused that. But this research, right. they decided to try to to sort of eliminate a lot of these things. They designed an experiment that would work around a lot of these distraction issues. They put EEGs, um, electroencephalograms, but basically these electrode caps on the dogs and um and and they would uh try to get them not to fetch something this is kind of an interesting uh design that they had it took advantage of what's known in psychology as the n400 effect which is uh when you show an ob when you show a subject that you're that you're experimenting on an object right and then you either present them with a matching or mismatching name for that object then the brain activity looks different depending on whether you you gave them a matching or mismatching object. Oh wow! Okay. All right. Mm. Um, so it's it's very distinct the brain activity. So there we know that that the brain responds differently when a word is matched with an object or if it's not matched with an object. It's called the N four hundred effect because the peak of the difference in the brain activity appears about four hundred milliseconds after the presentation of the word. Um, but so what they did for dogs is they they reversed that they tested in the reverse they would they would give the dog a word like like say uh, where's the ball or something like that and then they would show them an object um, it kind of was clever they sat the dog in front of glass that could be this kind of glass that could be electronically made opaque or transparent and so they would present them with a recording of their owner. Yeah. giving them a word, a, a, a word that involved an object, and then they would make the glass trans, like go from opaque to transparent, and behind the glass would be objects. And sometimes that it, it would contain the object that was named, sometimes it wouldn't. And they wanted to see, is this uh, brain effect that we see in humans, do, do we see it in dogs? <laughs> and they found out that it does. So uh, how did, how did, was there any issues with the dog seeing the screen thing, given their difference of spectrum? They have a different visual spectrum than we do a little bit, right? Like, yeah, well, it was that? just glass. So, yeah. so it wouldn't have affected that because light can get through it just fine, but it's just, they would make the glass opaque. So nothing could get through. Okay. They couldn't see anything on the other side of it. Got and it. then it would just suddenly be transparent. And now they could see it. Okay. And, All right. And that they makes found sense. that, yeah, there is a clear difference in brain activity when they were presented with matching versus mismatching objects and the strength of the brain activity was stronger when the dog the more familiar the dog was with the object in question they so they break this down by breed or did they do it with certain kinds of dogs like was it a um i didn't see anything about that in, okay in just what curious if they like found it to be stronger in some breeds and less in others because it always, that would be a really it, interesting yeah. That would be a really interesting follow-up study if they didn't do that because we do know that different breeds of dogs were bred for different purposes, right? Sure, sure. Mm-hmm. In the same uh, way, you're never going to get a, a hummingbird to say your name, but you're going to get a um, you know a raven to do it. It's like right. there's And just also, like, some breeds of dogs are really good at um, identifying, like, 
and looking for things in the ground because they're like hounds or something like that. And they they are good at smelling things or or searching for things hidden on the ground where some some dogs aren't as good at that. You know, some yeah. are better at hearing or or. Like <clears throat> Did this take into account any of those um, popular? I showed a little video of it, but there's very popular dog button pads you can create and it's oh yeah where they actually make the noise when they press on it like they can say hungry feed yeah. me yeah feed me <laughs> they press a certain button yeah, yeah. i don't know i've never actually seen any kind of um science on how well those things actually work i'm sure it exists but um but those are interesting uh you know trying to figure out how to communicate with animals is something we're always trying to do especially yeah charismatic animals that we spend a lot of time with yeah the ones that we like <laughs> yeah <laughs> right that makes sense well that's interesting we don't care much about what uh what a possum wants to tell us no um. <laughs> no what do they have to say nothing is the answer right. to that oh uh, no i find i think that's just really interesting oh, so it's fascinating uh, yeah. yeah and i kind of wanted to get those buttons and try those with our dogs but yeah i'm not it's, sure it's uh they're expensive it's like boy that's a really expensive experiment to find out your dog doesn't want to press buttons to tell you when they're hungry <laughs> yeah because right. i'm guessing there are going to be dogs who don't <laughs> like they're straight up just never going to get it but then yeah. you might have one yeah. that'll be like oh it seems like when i push this i get fed and the, and and then maybe yeah. it'll be worth it but right. i don't know these things are expensive hundreds of bucks for this i'm not paying for yeah. that yeah well it's bobby hard to train too <clears throat> oh yeah hell yeah <clears throat> you uh you do this kind of stuff all the time on your little on your little show over there the uh the all around <laughs> science and uh we love that thing so tell people where to get it and what's coming up on that thing well all around science yeah that's our science podcast every week we talk about science and what's going on in, in science news and one of those things i mentioned a minute ago is we're going to be talking about this week that'll be next monday um it has to do with with the uh the the tick medication there's a tick medication in humans that they're working on oh. um but this one that came out today was a little bit different we talked about something that maybe a lot of people it's a it's a two-week theme we're talking about space and, and engineering in space but this time we talked about uh what the problem of trying to poop and pee in space oh uh, is that an issue i didn't know that was a thing it's not easy it's mm -hmm. not easy. I'll t uh, one little uh, huh. apparently, and I didn't realize this either. Apparently, we evolved all of our bodily functions on Earth, where there's plenty of gravity, and so you you need the gravity to get it done. Like, <laughs> like yeah. you, okay. without sure. gravity, apparently, uh, you can't tell when you need to pee very yeah. easily. Yeah, because <laughs> uh, the weight of the gravity. the weight of your bladder changes. Like, it's not pressuring yeah. downward anymore. Yeah, that's interesting. Exactly. Oh, Wasn't and, there? Uh, there's a whole thing I was reading about the other day about um, uh, heart or sorry, cancers are having a way easier time spreading and growing in space based on some studies wow. than than it is on Earth because. Gravity helps something cellular, like fight off something. I don't know the details, but this sounds like something you guys would cover eventually. Yeah, it sounds. It makes sense. Like our bodies, our bodies evolved in a gravitational field. So. Yeah, <laughs> we're all going to look like belters one day if we go out there too much. <laughs> yeah, gotta be careful. Right. Uh, well, fascinating. It's all around science. Wherever you get your podcast, go check that out. Bobby, uh, thanks for stepping in once again. Uh, yeah. For Stephen, he, no he, uh, he appreciates it too. As he's do a we. huge freaking nerd. That, he's a uh, huge uh, freaking nerd. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you next time. All right, there goes Bobby into the fray, and awesome. uh, here goes us into the. Why won't this work? There it is. It works now. Hey, you guys. A couple quick final things. I got a lift question for you, Brian, from Amanda. Yeah. She says cool. this. Good morning, scooters. Uh, sorry, scooter and bus. Question for Brian: How do you track your mileage for Lyft? I'm doing taxes and. Apparently, should have been tracking my mileage, LOL. What do you yeah. use so I can save myself some trouble for next year? Thank you, Amanda. What would you say? Yeah, see, that's the thing about Lyft. They track the miles that you put on your car when you've got a passenger in there, but they don't track the, like, oh, there's a Lyft ride four miles away. Go pick this person up. So that four miles never gets tracked. They start their their little clock when you when that person is in your car, and they end it when that person gets out of your car. So if you again, have to go another five miles to get to your next ride or two miles or whatever. None of that stuff is tracked. So I use, um, there's an app called Everlands and you let it have, you give it access to your tracking, right? So basically you can see where you're driving and then um, it logs your trip. So when you stop in a particular place for more than a minute, 
it treats it as the the end of one trip and the beginning of another one. So at the end of every day or the end of every week, you can go through and it's really just swiping left or right. Like, oh yeah, that was a ride I did for Lyft. That was a ride I did for Lyft. That was a ride I, you know, when we went out to dinner. Um, or you can do what I do, which is since I, uh, during the day, the only time I ever use my car prior to six o'clock on weekdays um, is to do Lyft. Otherwise we're taking Tina's car. And what I do is, uh, although that would still, because my phone is still with me when I am in Tina's car. Hmm, uh, well, we don't, we oh, don't shoot. care about that. <laughs> uh, but anything, but really anything prior to um, 7 p.m., any rides, I or, uh, drives or trips that I do prior to 7 p.m. are logged for Lyft. And then after 7 p.m. are for um, our personal. And the app is really, really easy to like. Uh, manage, you know, one versus the other. It seriously is like swiping left and right. What was the name of the app again? For, for uh, Ever Everlance. E v e r l a n c e. All one word. I think it maybe costs two or three bucks a month to track everything, but the money you'll save because you know, again, the report you get from Lyft. If you give that to your tax person, it's like great, you did exactly the mileage for for when somebody's in your car. But you want you want all the mileage you put on. Because yeah. there's a lot of it, and uh, yeah, and if you're like Brian and I, and you're independent, um, you know, mm-hmm. sole proprietorships, track all your mileage. Yeah, you can categorize sure. it, but just keep it all. Like my my accountant's like, what? I don't care where you're driving. You give me those miles, and I'm like, all right. Yeah, exactly. Right. I as went long to as Taco you're Bell. Work related. Yeah. <laughs> I went to Taco Bell. I had a meeting. I talked about work. It yeah. counts. So. I mean, it's it's like our uh, because we do film sack and because we talk about stuff on the show. Like our streaming services are are part of our work. Like they're they're absolutely included in our um, in our end of year statements. The amount we pay for those. Yeah, so. every video game I buy, every game service I subscribe to, PlayStation Plus, uh, Game Pass, all that stuff that all gets yeah. counted. Oh, I guess I need to do. start doing a show on browsers though uh, to quali- <laughs> to make that streaming service pay okay, that's right well, that's right yeah you gotta get that Bang going com. i guess i need to get uh <laughs> why not indeed Put that on the list yeah uh well thank you for that appreciate it quick note here um yeah. when you guys send us calls and they're you know the ones that get the, the 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 most for sure played on the show are ones that are like a minute or less uh sometimes you guys send two three minute calls that are great but it's mostly just like telling us a cool thing not really a respond to kind of thing and so uh, those tend to pile up a little bit. And today, after the song, I will be putting a stack of these. I think there are four total at the end of the song or at the end of the uh, thing. So if you're somebody who sent in one of these calls before and you thought, oh, they didn't play it because it was too long. I save these for this. This Every once in a while, we just do a little venting of longer calls. So after the song today, stay around for those. All right. Just let cool. you know at home. Live people, you won't hear them live, but everybody at home, you sure will. Uh, that's it. Everything is at frogpants.com slash TMS that you might ever need, except for this knowledge, which is a song we're going to play at the end of the show. And Brian will tell us all about it. Song knowledge. I love getting song knowledge. Uh, this one. So as I do continue to uh, play catch up with all the, uh, the requests that have come in over March, uh, I apologize for, for some of you actually have them on specific days. As a matter of fact, I think Chuck has one that was supposed to be today, but somebody had one that was requested earlier that I need to do. That's all right. Good luck. Yeah. Good luck with your uh, thing today, Chuck, and we'll talk about that tomorrow. I've got yours scheduled for tomorrow. Today, though, is um, uh, is a dedication from uh, Gene. So I told you about last month, um, Gene, who's a listener to the show, and also knows Marianne from Brooklyn, <laughs> from oh. the Howard Stern show. Wow, member of the Whack Pack. Yeah, uh, he uh, came out to uh, Denver with his uh, friend Margaly, and the two of them met us at a at a local brewery, and we just had a blast. Even though there was a live band performing in the uh, um, uh, in the, the the brewery, we still had a great time talking and laughing and and uh, uh, getting all caught up. Um, well. Uh, Gene writes, you once asked me, how do I know when I find the one? I finally found her. Thank you. Uh, and so this is a dedication from Gene to Margalee. And um, uh, they're just the, 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 the cutest friends, the cutest couple. So we're so happy that, um, that Gene, uh, Gene fancies her. Mm. <laughs> he requested some EDM. Uh, how about an EDM cover of one of the early 
pre-EDM new wave tracks that that if it were released today would have been EDM. It's a fantastic song by Flock of Seagulls called Space Age Love Song. This is by an EDM group called Dark Defiant Spaces from a uh, tribute to electronic music. came out in 1995 called To Cut a Long Story Short. Let's do that right now. Here is uh, Dark Distant Spaces and Space Age Love Song. Get more at frogpants.com. What the heck would cause that? Oh. <laughs> that was my sped up voice. Yeah. Weird. 